Hello, everyone. And Welcome to our program today. And as always, we're going to encourage you. We have 37 participants on. We're encouraging you to link the link. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Invite your enemies, your brothers, your sisters. Invite everyone. Because we have good, good information that everyone will want to hear. So we're asking you, please, to invite everyone. It doesn't get any better than this, OK? good good information now tell us in the chat where you're joining us from where you're zooming in from please tell us in the chat where you're zooming in from i'm trying to watch the chat here sylvia Oh, there's somebody from Georgia, Debbie, Deborah, uh, Anne Marie from Jamaica. We have Charles from Florida. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're happy to have you. It's a pleasure. And we have Brooklyn in the house as well. Welcome, welcome. And another Jamaica West Indies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brooklyn again in the house. It's a pleasure to have all of you here with us this evening. Like I said before, link the link. You do not want to miss this program. So please link the link, invite everyone. Now, our focus is to meet your needs. And everything that you're going to hear here today is for educational purposes only, okay? educational purposes only. So without further ado, Sister Donnelly is going to give us our opening prayer, and then I'm going to introduce the speaker. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this another afternoon that we can come to share what you have laid upon our hearts. We pray for each and everyone on this line this evening, or everyone who is listening. We pray for a special blessing upon this program. And I ask that the information that will be shared here today will change even one person's life. We thank you for this forum, even though we cannot meet in person, but we thank you for everyone who has joined us from all over the world to hear the plans that you have for us. We know that you have plans for us to prosper us and to make us healthy. So as we go into our program this evening, we ask that you will bless our presenter. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. And this evening's program is entitled how to optimize your body through cleansing. And we have with us today, our very own from Eden Lifestyle, our young handsome brother, Ezra St. Juice. And he will be speaking to us today, again, I'll repeat, on how to optimize your body through cleansing. Okay, so if anybody doesn't have a pen and some paper, get ready, get ready, get ready. We have precious, precious information to share this evening. Great, appreciate it so much. Thank you. And it's again a wonderful blessing to be with uh, each and every one of you. We appreciate it so much for allowing us to be able to uh, share a lot of these um, health truths. I believe uh, saving health truths with each and every one of us today. And I believe it's very important even now, especially as we're in the year 2022. Uh, 2021 has gone by quickly, but uh, right now is a time where individuals are making resolutions. Individuals are wanting to do better. And I, I hope that um, um, you are wanting to do better as well and already making changes in your life for this new year. So again, before we start off and as we continue on, I'm just going to start off with a word of prayer as we dive into things for this evening. 
Uh, wonderful blessing to be with each and every one of you. So let us pray together. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to be here with each and every one. And as we learn about to cleanse in this body of ours, I pray that we can um, uh, be able to embark upon those things and uh, have a healthier body, a healthier um, body, mind, and soul, you know, the entire cleanse. And I pray that we can truly um, uh, this year that we can really take care of our bodies a whole lot more than we did the previous year. And as a result, that we can experience the results in our lives. And um, our lives may also be a wonderful example for many others. Continue to lead and guide us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, amen. 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 And um, so, yeah. So again, again, it's really, I'm really grateful to be with each and every one of you. We'll be diving into some things as it pertains to cleansing and detoxification. But as we go along, just so I can know, how many of you here before have done a cleanse before? If you've done a cleanse, just type, just type yes in the chat. I just want to see. I'm actually going to uh, open up this chat to monitor just so I can see exactly um, how many of you have cleansed before. And if you haven't as yet, you never cleansed before, just put no. Um, I just like to see um, if we have some uh, alumni cleansing veterans in here or people who have never cleansed before, just so we can really understand uh, the mixture of what we have. If you've never cleansed before, just put in the word no. I'll see it. Someone said never. And again, whether you've cleaned before or never cleaned before, I believe this is for you. The uh, reason why I'm saying this is because, um, you know, at Eden Lifestyle, we really recommend individuals um, once or even twice a year, at least being able to do cleansing, being able to put yourself on a cleansing program, a cleansing regimen, um, you know, whether it may be um, five days, seven days, 10 days. And sometimes we have individuals doing an entire 30 day cleanse. And, um, you know, we see powerful results in just the cleansing aspects. And that is why right now we have, um, we have, you know, every single guest that comes to our center right now at Eden Lifestyle, we initially start them off with this process called cleansing. Uh, you know, the Bible gives us a principle. It says, um, you know, to not put new wine into all bottle skin. Um, you know, the reason why as well, when you, when you look at that from the standpoint of our body, you know, our body being the bottle, new wine being good food, um, you know, not putting new wine into an old bottle, the principle remains for us where we think about our lives. We say, okay, well, um, I'm about to put in, maybe I'm about to like have a diet change for this new year. I'm about to eat healthier. I'm about to put in all those healthy foods into my body. But guess what? Our bodies probably has been so toxic. It's been so backed up. It's, 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 it needs to unclog. I mean, it's like an old bottle skin. You know, we may put in a lot of the new food and wonder, wait, why aren't I getting so many benefits? You know, why am I feeling this way? Why aren't I ripping full results? I mean, you may be getting results, but it may not be to the full extent. Maybe it's because there's so much toxicity in the body that there isn't a, a good assimilation of nutrients that is taking place. So what we're about to share with you right now is how can we cleanse this temple of ours? How can we cleanse our bodies uh, so that we, we can allow, um, you know, great uh, assimilation of nutrients. And as a result, we can build up healthy blood, which again, Luke 1711 says, the life of the flesh is where? It's in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And, you know, again, that's so important uh, as we... If think about cleansing, one of the big areas that, you know, that, you know, that is cleansed, which is one of the, the major fluids of the body, it makes up a large percentage of our entire body, is really the blood. And when you think about it for a moment, you know, if, if we can really cleanse the blood, we told in councils, um, we told in councils through Ellen G. White, she's, she mentions that if we have perfect blood, then we have perfect health. Uh, think about it for a moment. Is, if, if the life of the flesh is in the blood, then if we can work on the blood and have perfect blood, if we can have a healthy blood, then we have a healthy body because the blood nourishes every cell in the body. It brings nourishment. It, it transfers water to every cell in the body. Also, it, it brings oxygen as well to every single cell in the body. So again, it is so essential to have a healthy body, healthy blood. And you think about this for a moment as it pertains to our vehicles, you know, a simple scenario example that we typically share. Like, for example, how often is it recommended for an individual uh, with a, who owns a vehicle to do an oil change, to, like, change the oil in the vehicle? Like, let me know in the chat. How often is it recommended? Or how often do you change your vehicle oil? Um, just let me know in the chat. I can see some answers. Let me see some answers. 
But how often do you change the oil in your vehicle? I'd love to be able to know from you. Um, let's see here. Um, someone says every 3,000 miles. Wow, I don't know how, like, for us, we put on miles so quickly in our vehicles. Like, we can go through 3,000 miles sometimes in, in two, three days. That's how much um, that's how much we put it on, especially if we do the long trip, of course. But um, but again, like you know, three thousand miles. Let's just say that maybe like every three months on average, or you know, some people longer, a little less, but you know, on average, it's about that three plus months. So again, think about this for a moment. We spend so much money just doing all changes in our vehicles, like a minimum of maybe what thirty dollars minimum. I'm not sure what you pay, but we spend so much money just doing all changes. Every single year, we probably spend over a hundred dollars, whatever it is, doing all changes on our vehicle. But even besides that, there's so many other servicing things that we may do and spend a whole bunch of money on a vehicle that could easily be replaced. Do you get what I'm saying? Like a vehicle could be replaced like this. Like you know, it's, it's it doesn't have a soul. It doesn't have a life. It's just a it's just pieces of metal with electric wires and everything else, which is great. But this body, friends, this body is so much more precious. It's so much more precious. And, you know, it's like there's a living soul in this body as well. Like, you know, we are that living soul. And, um, you know, so again, when you think about it, you know, God himself says, you know, you are bought with a price. And, you know, he, he commissions us to cherish this body, which, which is given to us on loan. And I pray that we can be able to put more care and thought into this body. Also, we, we told, you know, through, through the Bible as well, it says that God gave us even herbs for the service of man. He gave us those natural things in nature, those herbs and many other foods and so on in nature that is to be used for our service. Why? Because it, when you go to Psalms 100, basically it says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that have made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And, you know, God himself who has made us is the same one who has made all these natural herbs in nature. And you know what? I'm really going to take God at his word right now. And if he says, like, this is what is good for my service, for my cleansing, I'm going to use this. And, um, you know, as we move forward even more, as we move forward even more, we're going to be seeing uh, powerful remedies. We'll be demonstrating some things. I have several things as well on my table right now. We're going to be seeing... Um, some of the things that we may have in our kitchen and how we can be able to, um, uh, you know, how we can be able to like utilize those different things to be able to help with the entire healing process, help with the healing process. I remember, um, I remember when I first started cleansing, right? I was still a teenager then. And um, at that time I, I did my first cleanse and I'm like, oh, I'm pretty young. Well, I've been, at that time I was like plant-based for maybe, uh, maybe like uh, four years or something like that. And I said, okay, uh, three or four years. And I said, okay, well, you know, I've been eating this way for like three, four years. And, you know, um, you know, I'm pretty young. So I don't think there'll be anything major that will um, probably come out of me. And, you know, little did I know that time, like I had a whole bunch of um, liver stones, you know, those cholesterol stones like gushing out of my body. I had like a whole bunch of waste I never knew could have ever existed inside of me because I'm like, what more could come out? Like, but there's so much coming out, right? And um, I mean, there are just so many things that took place. And I'm, I'm telling you, um, one of the things that we notice in our programs as we work with people, cleansing people, is we, we, we started off working with people just doing the cleansing before we started, um, you know, doing the other processes. Like first stage is uh, cleansing. As after we cleanse, we rebuild individuals, three steps. The cleansing, rebuild, and after maintenance, you know, main, maintain that proper health. But then when we first started off with just the cleansing and detox, and we noticed that many people in that first stage, their diseases were already going away. Like we see, oh, that person diabetes is going away. Oh, arthritis pains are going away. And like, you know, there's so many things, so many benefits. People with a lot of mucus and asthma, respiratory issues, like those things were being alleviated through just cleansing. So we're like, whoa, if cleansing is so powerful, uh, let us continue to intensify this even more that people can get the results that they need and be able to allow themselves to overcome disease. And again, you know, after cleansing, of course, we rebuild and add on other aspects. But today we'll be focusing on cleansing and seeing how can we begin to implement that today. We'll be looking at the different channels of elim elimination. We'll look at some of them from like how to cleanse our blood, kidneys, colon, which is one of the major ones. And also, of course, 
the liver it processes blood every single th every three minutes so this is how important it is our, our entire body i, I mean if, if we can get the blood in, in proper condition which all the organs really have impacts the blood like you know the colon if it's not cleansed those toxic waste are, waste are reabsorbed into the blood and then we have so much toxicity in there uh, if the liver is not cleansed properly, then the blood that is going through the liver every three minutes, um, you know, I mean, all the blood going through the liver every three minutes, basically wouldn't be thoroughly cleansed. So as a result, we'll have unhealthy blood, which is equivalent to an unhealthy body, a disease decaying body. So again, we're going to really be seeing that as we move forward. So I hope everyone is with us or with me today as we dive into this. If you're excited, let me know. I'm ready. Let me just in the chat if you're ready for those remedies. Just let me know that I'm ready. And why don't you share this as well? I'm just going to give a short um, foundation as we move forward, um, you know, uh, in, in that entire cleansing period. So again, there's four simple steps, four simple, four simple steps towards health and healing. I mentioned this, four simple steps towards health and healing. And that is taken from the book of Ministry of Healing. Ministry of Healing, it gives four simple steps to health and healing. And I'm going to share those steps with you today so that way you can be able to understand that. And I'm sure you, some of you may have heard this before, but we're going to see in what step does the cleansing aspect comes in. Cleansing. And we're going to see cleansing very specifically in those steps as well. Now, Ministry of Healing, of course, very close to that um, page 127. Um, you'll find those uh, that in there too. But basically it says in Ministry of Healing, you know, it gives us those four steps on how we can be able to restore our body. So this is what it says. You know, it, it says in case of sickness, one, it says the cause should be ascertained. That is searching out the cause, finding out what is wrong, like what is going on. And again, in order for you to find the cause, where must you search? You know, is it is it on the CDC website? Is it searching Dr. Fauci's library? Uh, well, you know, if you have to find out the cause, friends, you need to go back and search um, the laws, search the moral laws, one to search natural laws, what you call the laws of health. Find out, okay, what law am I violating? And this is how you begin to search. You see in the book, in the book of Job chapter 29, um, you know, Job says, the cause which I knew not, I searched it out. So Job is saying here that, you know, I search out the cause that I do not know. So if you have, you know, something's going on in your life, of course, you search it out. Of course, you can also go get a diagnosis and see what is going on. That's one aspect as well, a diagnosis. But when, it, when, when you get a diagnosis that says, okay, you have high blood pressure, the high blood pressure isn't really the cause per se. The high blood pressure is a byproduct of the cause. So what you probably really have is a uh, maybe like a stress problem. Like that is your cause. High blood pressure is not really the reason. The stress is the reason, right? So then number one, ascertain the cause, first step in healing and restoration. Second step in healing and restoration, it says, after the cause is ascertained, you change unhelpful condition. Unhelpful conditions should be changed. Uh, meaning that, okay, maybe I may be in an environment, like for example, I remember um, very early in, in this work, as I started off doing medical missionary work, started off working with the sick, I was, I was at a very young age. I started off ministry when I was like, um, uh, 16 going on 17 years old and I was already doing this like you know full time at that particular time I started working with people working with the sick um, started going into the homes working with people also traveling to different centers I, I I was like helping out several different lifestyle centers just around the U.S. just working with the sick and so on and I remember um, I remember I, I went over to I was in Georgia at that time uh, went over to a center and we were working with a man at that time that was um that, that had like lung cancer. And um, this man that had lung cancer, what we realized well, one of the causes of his lung cancer, uh, you know, was actually due to his conditions. We talked about unhealthy conditions should be changed, right? It was due to his conditions. What do I mean by this? This man was working on, a, on like a cruise ship. He was a welder and he would have to go into like the base of those uh, ships and he would have to like be in certain positions, um, you know, that is very, tight, uh, you know, not much air, don't have any air circulation going on. And for many hours all day, like welding with all the fumes around him. And oftentimes he'll be inhaling this over and over again. Now you keep doing this to your body. Okay, your lungs is trying to expel it and it's 
trying to push this out. It's pushing it out. Your body is naturally trying to cleanse itself all the time. It's naturally trying to heal yourself. But you know what? There's a certain point where there's a limit to, um, you know, there's a limit to basically how much, how much your body can actually handle. And, you know, oftentimes we push our bodies to the limit until it begins to break down. And, you know, before we break down, you know, you know, it's our appeal to you is to be able to make those changes right now today. Don't wait for it to break down. Like, you know how it feels when you break down? Anyone have broken down before with their vehicles on the highway? And it's just like, whoa, you know, it's, but then just physically as well, like not just a vehicle, but this body of ours, you know, breaking down is, 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 is way more terrible than just a breakdown of a vehicle. But this man, um, he had lung cancer and we were working with him and, and, you know, and that was as a result of his conditions. So again, sometimes maybe we may have to change our job. Maybe we may have to change um, um, our living space, you know, wherever we are, like all those are um, points to consider. Very quickly, number three, um, so we can move on. Uh, so number one was ascertain the cause. Number two, change in healthful conditions. Number three, wrong habits should be corrected. And that is the part where, you know, many of us shy away from. We say, well, you know, um, Dr. So-and-so or brother so-and-so and whoever it is that you, you're requesting, like, uh, what, what can I take for this? Like, we want, we want the next remedy, right? We want the next solution that is just a pop, uh, a pop and we just, and, and that's it. You know, something we can just drink, like, okay, is, is there a concoction? Maybe, maybe there's a concoction for this. Of course there are those, and that's great. But it's not just all about this. We also have to see, well, what is it that, has, that, is, that is causing my issue? Because remember, with every disease, there is a cause, right? Uh, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2, it said, as a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. The curse causeless shall not come. The curse causeless shall not come. So remember now, the curse or the disease, in other words, it's synonymous words, curse or disease doesn't come without a cause. But friends, what is powerful is this. If you find, if you find out the cause, guess what? You found out the cure. You know, oftentimes, you know, you, you would notice that by just making those changes in your lifestyle, you already see so much results. And oftentimes right away, you know, you're able to actually get full relief without even applying, let's say, other remedial agencies. However, of course, there are times our body is so broken down, vital force is so weakened that we need to ensure that we can implement other remedies to assist us. Where does that come in? And step number four, that's what we're about to do right now if you share with you some details. But step number four says this, then, then, Nature is to be assisted. How? Nature is to be assisted in her effort. It says to expel impurities. What, what does that sound like? Is that cleansing? Nature is assisted in her effort to do what? Expel impurities. That is cleansing. That's, that's detoxification. Expel impurities. Then it says, and reestablish right conditions into the system. Cleansing, rebuilding. Cleansing and rebuilding, right there. So again, nature is to be assisted to expel impurities. So that is what we're really sharing with you today. What we're sharing with you today is um, how we can assist nature to expel impurities. Now notice something here. In order to assist nature to expel the impurities, it only makes sense to use what is in nature. And Oftentimes, if we use something else to try to cleanse the body or help the body that may be synthetic, chemical driven, then you know, it always makes me think like, if we are assisting nature to expel impurities, why would we add in impurities to try to expel the existing impurities that is already in the body? Or why would we add in more toxic chemicals if we're trying to get rid of the toxic chemicals? Just doesn't make sense. It's from, it stands from the belief that like cures like. But you know, we, we, we see her very clearly that, you know, we need to use something that doesn't work against our body, but actually helps the body in the process. And I found that if we utilize the simple things in nature, we recognize that, hey, 
those things actually aid the body. It's, 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 it's if God was to have a, a medicine cabinet, a medicine chest or whatever it is, um, I believe you'll see many of those things in there that may be in the backyards or the supermarkets or, um, uh, you know, of many people. So again, I'm really excited to share that with you all. And I pray that um, this may be a blessing as well for everyone that is on that. We can take those practical things that we're about to discover and see how we can apply that to our, um, you know, see how we can apply that to our lives. So we're going to go ahead and start off and we're going to see some remedies. We're going to dive into some remedies right now uh, as much as possible. And um, so that way we can be able to dive into some things together. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with the kidneys. I'm going to start off with the kidneys. Um, we have several different elim eliminating organs. And uh, we have about like five different eliminating organs. We have about like uh, seven different eliminating channels. So again, for example, just throw in the chat any eliminating channel that you know of, any channel of elimination, a channel of detoxification. And uh, someone says the skin. This is actually the largest, the largest channel of elimination. Very important one right there. And uh, someone else says the lungs. It's so important because you know what? Without this one as well, you wouldn't be alive. Like literally you'll be dead. Like how long can you survive without proper air? Someone else said the colon. Um, I believe that's one of the most important ones uh, because this is something that, hey, uh, we do, we should be doing regularly every day. No, we don't, right? And um, the colon is, is like a cause of many issues that we have. Someone else says the liver, very important. The liver is a gland. In the, in the body, but um, it's a very powerful one, that is. Um, you know, very close to the liver, you have like a gallbladder, stools are deposited in there. Um, if the liver is not working well, friends, I've seen many people go down very quickly to the grave because of a faulty liver. That's how important it is. Uh, people with liver cancer, um, different um, severe liver issues, those things could be very fatal and, and very serious. Um, um, you know, I remember I got a call from Jamaica um, I was on a house call that time and someone was describing, um, you know, someone was describing like uh, someone that was having like cancer. And uh, if I recall very well, it, I believe it might have been liver cancer as well. But then they were just explaining to me where they were in the journey and the symptoms that they were having and so on. And, I, and based, based upon my experience and what, they were, what was going on with them, it, I said, wow, it, you know, not to them, but I said to the individuals, it, you know, it. it you have to prepare for something as well, because it seems like um, this person is in a very terrible condition right now. And based upon what you're describing, people that I've seen with that, who, you know, they, they went down really quickly. And, you know, you know so, it, so I said, so it was in less than two weeks, um, you know, that person, you know, they weren't able to get, of course, the help that they needed and so on. And, you know, went, went down to the grave. But, you know, um, it's something that we have to take very seriously. You know, God has given us so many ample things in nature that if, if we use the things that God has provided, I believe that we can um, add many more years to our life. Not only add years to our life, but if there are no years added to our life, guess what? What is even more powerful is adding life to our years as well. Um, again, so that way, you know, we can be able to live a, a wonderful, vibrant, healthy life, um, you know, without all the other complications. Someone else says respiratory system. And uh, so that says the pancreas. Pancreas is not one of the limiting channels, but it's definitely a very important gland um, in the body, uh, definitely. So let us see something as we move along. We're going to look at the kidney for a moment. Um, there are several different herbs we recommend for the kidney. So cleansing the kidney. Why do you want to cleanse the kidney? Um, again, there is an entire filtration set up in unit that is within the kidney area. And oftentimes we may, because of the, because of the kidneys, um, many people may experience things like kidney stones. Uh, it may be more common in, in men, uh, kidney stones, and sometimes it hurts very much. Like individuals with, you know, I've, I've heard from many individuals and, and doctors when they make comparison to how the extent of the pain of a kidney stone is, they said passing a kidney stone, a man passing a kidney stone is worse than a woman giving birth. <laughs> now, I don't know if you agree with this statement or not, but let me know if you think that's true. But then this, this is what some, uh, some uh, professionals, doctors, whoever it is, uh, that's what some people say, right? Um, a man passing a kidney stone is, um, is worse than a woman giving birth. I always know, you know, it's a, well, giving birth is one of the most painful, you know, blessed, but also could be a very painful experience as well. 
doesn't have to be, but it could be. Um, so again, um, yeah, men just cannot stand pain. I think that's what it is. I, I think women are just strong and men just can't stand pain. They, they can do other things, but pain, women can handle more, right? So then, um, you know, again, kidney stones is one of the things, can, kidney cleansing, it really helps with that. Um, many times we, we develop kidney issues because of things like, you know, taking in like dehydration. Dehydration is a big factor for kidney issues. Um, you know, a lot of things like caffeinated beverages, those have the huge impacts as well. Um, not just caffeinated beverages, but uh, different carbonated be beverages like sodas and all those other things continue to damage our kidneys, uh, impacts it. One of the big things that impacts kidneys, I would say is this, is what you call um, high protein diets, high protein diets. And yeah, that's, that's, that's a, major, a major reason why we have so many different kidney issues. Because again, when the body is trying to process and digest a large amount of uh, um, uh, protein at once with all the nitrates being released as well, that creates a pressure on the kidney area. And um, you know, that is why we have developed in situations, uh, many people having like kidney failure, going on dialysis and many of the issues like that because of high protein diet. Now, what are some common names for that modern terms for high protein diet today? You look at things like the keto diet. Have you ever heard of the keto diet before? Yeah, that keto diet is, I mean, no one should really be on a keto diet. Um, you know, that is really, that's really damaging. What's against, what's against nature? Um, so again, uh, simple whole foods, plant-based diet, the way that God intended, going close to nature as possible. This is really what is recommended for optimal health, uh, kidney function, and so on. And so again, those are some herbs I recommend. If someone is, uh, you know, not only kidney stones, there are things like, um, uh, kidney and bladder, of course, urinary tract, it's, it's all one. There are things like um, uh, that people may have like the different bladder issues, whether it may be infections and so on. Um, you know, there are, there are several different components, urinary infections, uh, weak bladders. Uh, there's several things that could be impacted by someone who may not necessarily have proper urinary health. So I'm just going to share with you a few things just to be able to help in cleansing the um, urinary system as we move forward. And we're going to after this, we're going to like dive through some remedies. I hope you're ready. Um, get your pens and paper as well. You're ready to write down. We're going to write down what you can do. Then I'm going to share with you how you can be able to put this together, some options, suggestions. Um, but, um, you know, as we head into the kidney, um, is, you know, one thing to note is, you know, one of some of the powerful herbs I recommend is things like juniper berry. Juniper berry is extremely powerful as a, as a diuretic as well. And naturally, that actually helps. Uh, even with people with like uh, blood sugar, it's actually very powerful juniper berries, but also um, kidney health, it's major, it helps the body to uh, have urine flow properly. Some people have trouble urinating, um, you know, whether it may be unable to urinate properly or um, taking long to urinate or, um, you know, in the urination, it's like, it's, it's not consistent. Um, you know, so juniper berry definitely is powerful for that. Also, I'll uh, just mention um, one other one, which is marshmallow seeds. Um, mash, you know, sorry, not for marshmallow. Uh, what watermelon seeds? I don't know why I said marshmallow. Marshmallow root actually helps. Marshmallow root, but then watermelon seeds. Watermelon seeds um, is extremely powerful as well, especially for like you know cleansing the kidneys, really helping breaking down even stones in the kidneys and so on. So this is what I recommend that you do. Right, you take a watermelon, seeded watermelon, buy a watermelon, go to the store, get a watermelon that is seeded. You you scoop out the inside part of that watermelon. Whatever amount you're able to, I mean, uh, whatever amount you're able to drink, but again, you can do anywhere from like eight to um, 16 ounces. Um, you'll, you'll take like, you'll scoop it out, place it in a blender with the seeds. You place it in a blender with the seeds and you like basically blend it up. You just blend it all up and you blend that together. Then that watermelon juice is a very powerful beverage that you can be able to drink to be able to help in cleansing the kidney area and also being able to like help break down a lot of the stones that may be in there. And um, talking about like, uh, you know, kidney stones as well, um, I would say another an herb that is really good, if someone is having kidney stones, wants to be able to cleanse that out, wants to release it, of course, one of the things you want to do is also make sure you hydrate yourself a lot, um, um, lots of hydration, that will be very important. And um, also you want to be able to use like hand drying, um, hydrangea, uh, that one is very good for that and really helps in breaking it down even more. Um, really help breaking down the stones a lot more along with even doing that watermelon juice. And I'm going to share some more things uh, with us. So someone says, do we include the white part of the watermelon? Um, I think you're referring to the inside part. It, it doesn't hurt if you include some of the white parts in there. 
um, that's fine. It, it doesn't really hurt to do that. Um, you can do that as well. Um, and just blend, blend everything up. And that really helps. So, um, so then, yeah, just drink, drink about like two cups of, you can drink about like two cups, that's six ounces, three times a day. Two cups of that three times a day is very powerful for that. So someone else may be having like, especially women, it occurs more in women, you may have like more, let's say bladder issues where you have like um, uh, UTIs and stuff like that. Um, some of the most powerful things that I've seen, you know, being able to help with that as it pertains to the kidney is, you know, again, you know, utilizing cranberry, which has a lot of cran actin in there. Um, that's what is really powerful for that. So you want to get like cranberry juice, you want to do that regularly as well. If, if anyone is having like UTI cranberry juice, you definitely want to implement and do that. And then along with that as well, um, being able to, I mean, in, in your regular meals, if, if, you, if you're not doing a regular cans, of course, if you're not doing just juices and you're doing meals, um, also adding in quite a few of um, garlic as well will actually be very powerful. But let me get this here. I'm going to share a few some, um, you know, share some things with you. But definitely like cranberry juice, if you're doing it, do about like two to three, two to three of those daily. Someone says, well, what about urinary incontinence for male? Um, so I would say this, um, one of the things that would help better for that would be consult, consult, yeah. Uh, so you can go ahead, go to the store, whether it may be a um, herb, herbal store or a health food store, whatever it is, get some consult. If you can't find it, you can go to any grocery stores that has good corn and just buy the corn and you just, you know, open it up, the part that people usually throw out, which is the silk and everything else, like take the silk, the hairy stuff from it. And you can utilize that as well for incontinence. That will actually work very well for that. Um, so yeah, so then, you know, so again, cleansing the, the kidney is very important. Um, again, powerful juices for the kidneys, the watermelon juice, cranberry juice, helps a lot with the kidneys. And also, um, you know, if you're making a juice, like simple juices for different renal kidney issues or urinary issues would be even carrot, cucumber, um, celery, and parsley. Like this is a powerful combo if you really look into focusing on the kidneys. Like I'm mentioning those, if someone just really wants to focus on kidney and then they cleanse that, you can really just do things to cleanse the kidney in a period of time. But I'll also recommend at the end, like how you can probably do all together if you want to do a full body detox. Like, you know, so there are times where you can just say, hey, I want to cleanse my colon, my liver. I want to clean my colon, liver, and my blood, you know, whether it all works, you know, hand in hand. Uh, you want to do a full body cleanse. You, so there are different ways to go about that, but I'm just sharing with you one by one in case someone wants to like cleanse certain areas, but I'll also share with you how you can do all. Um, so someone says, can I use a fresh cranberry fruit to make my own juice? Most definitely use a fresh cranberry, make your own juice even better, even better. Um, and if you do ever buy it from the store, make sure it's 100% cranberry juice. Like those things are mixing with so many stuff these days. It's like, it's like, is it, is it water? Is it, um, is it all the supplements they add in or is it cranberry? Like what is in there? Uh, so yeah, make sure you, you, um, you can make your own. That's perfectly fine. or get hundred percent cranberry juice. Um, so also, uh, can I, someone say, can, uh, what about milk thistle? Milk thistle is very powerful for the liver, very powerful for the liver. Um, um, we'll come to that soon, but it, uh, you know, it can actually be used as well. You know, of course, the herbs is not only for one organ only, but definitely helps the kidneys. But when we speak about the liver, even more so for like the liver, but cleansing itself, like you know, a milk thistle that definitely is powerful. Um, how do you use consult? Consult if you're using it, um, from the, if you're using the silk, you can really just take like a handful, um, whatever handful is for you. Um, you know, close handful, you can take a handful, place it into like your, um, you know, your, your pot, whatever it is, and make a tea out of it. Make a tea out of it, you know, um, maybe adding like two cups of water in there, it will simmer down a bit, um, but then, uh, you know, two or three cups of water, and then you can make a tea out of that and be able to drink it. Of course, if you're doing increase strength or decrease strength, you can either decrease the amount of water you add or increase the amount of water you add. It really based upon where someone is but you can make a tea out of that. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's definitely a good question. Good question. So again, um, there are several other things for kidney. I won't go into all those details. Like right now, I'm actually um, sharing with you some details. Um, I'm actually going through some of the uh, remedies that we, we would recommend even in our, um, one of our classes that we, use, that we have done and put out, our advanced natural remedies training. Um, all this is actually in our manual as well. So 
Um, if anyone has the manual, then some of those remedies are in there. Of course, if you ask questions, I may see additional remedies or I may refer an additional thing that may not be in there. But for the most part, majority of it is in our advanced natural remedies training manual. Um, so for anyone who has it in there. But I'll, be, I'll backtrack a little bit. So now this is the key, just general. Let me show you basic way of cleansing, basic principles of cleansing, basic way to go about doing it, right? So that way you can have a framework in your mind if you were to do a cleanse, framework in your mind, you know, just backstepping a bit. So if you're going through a cleansing program, you can cleanse with raw foods, but it's not the most ideal if you really want to get maximum results, right? So then there are different levels. So ideally, what's best, what we suggest during cleansing is strictly juices, 100% juices throughout the entire time. You know, you, you're not eating anything solid, right? And um, if you're unable to do juices for whatever reason, which majority of people are, it's just mental, it's making up your mind to do something and sticking with it and actually doing it and not worrying about your meal and chewing something, you know. Um, every single day we chew so much throughout the day, like we don't ever give our stomach a time to rest. Um, but then, you know, um, again, ideally juices, second in line, if for whatever reason you cannot do it, then definitely you can do raw as well. You can do two or three raw meals um, to be able to do your entire cleansing period. So that's like a two, that's like probably like two main ways that you can do it. So if you were to do juices, I'll just focus on that one right now. So if you were to do juices, then I would suggest doing four juices a day. So you want to write that down. Like uh, if you do juices, cleanse in period, I assure if you basic cleanse, then everything that I mentioned about the different channels of elimination, that is really to add on to your foundation of what you're doing, the basic cleanse foundation to make it more effective for certain organ areas, for certain in limiting channels, it just intensify the results. So again, what you'll do is four juices a day. Each one of those juices will be 16 ounces. You know, that's what we recommend, you know, to, for like real, real solid results, 16 ounces. And those juices will be 100% like natural juice. Like, you know, oftentimes well, all the time we actually juice it ourselves in our juicer. Um, if for whatever reason you cannot juice it yourself, then sometimes maybe you can find like 100% like juice at your local store, whether it may be like grip, uh, grip juice or apple juice or any of those, that could work as well. But again, if the fresher it is, the better. Um, so um, juices, four times a day, 16 ounces, each juice. And um, you want to be able to space that out throughout the day. You know, that's, you, know you can space it out throughout the day. Um, juices goes through the digestive tract and gets absorbed into the bloodstream on an average of like 30 minutes, a little over that, but like 30 minutes. So again, you don't need like a five hour space like you would if you were to eat a regular meal, right? And uh, so it's, it's not a meal, it goes, it goes through, it's almost like drinking lemon water. Lemon water is a beverage, it's a juice, you know, so having a regular other juice, it's almost the same. It goes through the bloodstream. And um, so you can space that throughout the day. Now, um, you know, so then that is like the basic foundation. So then you want to be able to see, okay, what juice recipe do I use for that cleansing period? Then uh, really based upon like, you know, we, we have so many different juice recipes. Like even in our manual, we have a long list from like um, for blood pressure, for cancer, different types and so on. All there are like general ones that you can utilize, you know? So again, it's not any, it's not any fixed juice per se, but you can do whatever works is the principle of juicing, but uh, you know, we have recipes that intensify for certain reasons. And I'll mention certain, certain um, foods as we go along that may be good for certain different issues that you can implement more on your cleansing to take advantage of it. But um, so again, four juices a day, 16 ounces, um, you can use different juice recipes for that. And then you want to be able to um, choose the amount, the time frame of your cleansing period. So for example, uh, I would say a minimum of three days, right? Minimum of three days. If you want to get like good results, minimum of three days. Um, typically, even at the center, we have people come in, they cleanse an average of like seven to 10 days. Majority of people who stay two weeks actually go on juices and cleanses for 10 days. And, and again, afterwards, it's like they feel great even throughout. Um, it, it, it really does a lot. We've had people who wanted to lose weight and literally in, in 14 days, of working with them like we had like a uh, an individual at our center that actually broke the record of everyone else recently i believe he lost like 
in 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 like uh, two weeks, he was able to lose about like sixty pounds, and that was huge because we we, we haven't seen that before. You know, it's in such a time frame. But again, he was over five hundred pounds, so you know, for someone of that weight, of course, you can expect something like that. But uh, that, this is not to scare those that are. Uh, like my size right now, you know, don't be afraid because I cleanse and I don't lose 60 pounds. I don't have 60 pounds to lose, right? So um, again, it's really based upon your body and, and, and so on. Your entire build will determine um, how, how, it, you know, how it reacts to the cleansing, but we encourage everyone to do it. So again, minimum of three days, but um, you know, we've had people go for seven, for seven days, for 10 days, and also one of our cleansing, like for example, we have a cleansing here. I'm just gonna show you our book. It's actually connected to our, um, all our cleansing kits, our entire cleanse kit, our, all our cleanse products. It's called a Total Body Cleanse Kit Guide. But this, this actually goes along with, for example, some of the things that we have, but I'm just showing this to you because this one is like a 30 day intense cleansing and detox program. So we've had people who, who do the, um, uh, 30 day of just juices. And again, like if, if you have cancer, if you have a uh, terminal issue, some of those, I really recommend doing 30 days just juicing. Like if you really want to get the results, I'm telling you, we've seen so many issues going away in just a cleansing period. Um, and, you know, we have people unable to walk, like literally, like we've had people unable to walk, coming to the center and inflammation, friends, and just cleansing and detoxing. Inflammation going away to an extent that we have people unable to walk now walking up and down our mountain. Like, you know, we're up in the mountain area and, um, and you know, and, and again, one of the hills that we have is actually really steep. So we say, hey, if, if at the end of this health program, you can walk up and down this hill, then we know that you're on the right track. And we've had many people being able to go completely up and down even after doing those things. So again, but with this program, you don't, you know, for those who think, oh man, I don't know if I can do 30 days juicing, that's perfectly fine. Um, we integrate it as well where people could actually do, it's broken up in three stages, three 10 day stages. You can choose to do juices for one stage and uh, consume whole food plant-based meals for the others as well. So just, just to give you an understanding of time frame. So you want to choose your time frame. If you want to know where to start, I would at least suggest seven to 10 days, seven to 10 days. Uh, if you're on the full results, I do suggest if you've never done it before, if you haven't done it in like 12 months, then you need to do like a full body detox. If you haven't done it in 12 months, I suggest a full body detox. Um, if you do it regularly, you can always do like seven to 10 days. That's fine. Um, or you can even do a full detox every single year. You know, those are recommended. So that is foundational stuff. And of course, when you do juices as well, make sure you have this beverage in between. It's called water. It's so essential. You, you know, of course, drinking juice is not drinking water. It's two different beverages. You still want to have your water, drink as much water as possible. You wouldn't be able to drink the regular amount of water because again, you have so much juices coming in. And especially as we start talking about other things, there may be teas that you may do. So again, um, but then you still want to make sure you have a good amount of water, keep that hydration going. Uh, so that is like the foundation of things that is, uh, th that needs to be there for the cleansing. So now on top of that, we're talking about different limited channels and you definitely want to see, okay, well, um, which channels do I want to target? Do I want to target all of them? Or do I want to like, um, you know, do I want to like focus on cleansing, but I'm going to also do things for my kidneys because maybe that is something I need to work on. I'm going to do things for my colon. I definitely recommend every single person cleansing the colon and the liver. If there's anything you need to cleanse, the colon and the liver, very essential. So that's what I'm going to actually go ahead and talk about right now, just in case we're unable to speak about, because I know time is going, in case we're unable to speak about the other ones, we're definitely going to talk about the colon and the liver. I'm going to start with the colon first, then I'm going to go to the liver afterwards, because um, if there's anything you need to cleanse, you want to make sure your colon is cleansed, and also you want to make sure you're able to cleanse your liver, liver gallbladder. And that's so important as you go along. We're going to be seeing um, why this is so important. And, and you know, just, just so that way we can see things, we can do that. Let's, let's go over the colon right now. We're going to go over the colon, and then we're going to look at the liver for a second. So, for example, um, when we look at the colon, when we look at the colon, colon is a very key eliminating organ in our body. I'll tell you this, in uh, working with people, majority of people are found to be um, constipated. And many of our issues stem from constipation. 
Um, I believe that a large majority of what we have is because we, we our bowels are not moving properly, our, which causes our blood to be very toxic and causing many different issues. Everyone with cancer, like majority of people we work with, with cancer, there's one thing they have in common, constipated, constipated. If you really want to help in overcoming disease, you need to also be able to ensure that you can cleanse those areas, cleanse that main organ, your colon area from, um, you know, all this fecal waste. Um, you think about the colon, we really need to be using the restroom like once for every meal that we have, uh, you know, bowel movement for every meal that we have. So for example, if someone is having two meals a day, let me know in the chat, how many bowel movements do they need to have every day? If you're having two meals a day and you need to have a bowel movement for every meal, how many bowel movements do you, do you need to have every day? So of course, people are saying two, we have good mathematicians here. Like, great, I, I love when we know math very good, right? And mass was one of my favorite things um, when I was younger. So then also, um, if you have three meals a day, how many bowel movements do you need to have every day? Oh, look at this, mathematicians. Okay, great, three. Okay, so what if I start eating and I wake up and I, uh, two hours later I eat again and I eat uh, lunch and afterwards I snack again and I eat and I end up having like eight meals a day. What do you think happens to the bowels now? How many, how many um, bowel movements? How many bowel movements should we have? Eight meals a day. Wow, look at that. That's so... Oh. I wonder if people who do all those things and snack and so on, if we have in, uh, eight, eight, eight bowel movements. Um, I was speaking to someone on the phone um, last week, I believe it was, and um, that individual is having, you know, certain health issues, health conditions, and, um, you know, sometimes we could be very shy about our bowel movements and how many we have regularly, but I recognize that this man sounded like he was constipated. It's like, based upon his life, based upon his condition and everything else, I just knew that he wasn't, like, going to the restroom, so... You know, I had to ask it in a way so he can sort of like share the reality of what it is. So I say, well, uh, so and so, um, uh, tell me like, how often do you use the restroom? He was thinking like, um, you know, um, and based upon what he was describing in, in my mind, I probably thought maybe he was using it um, every once a week. So I say, well, maybe do you use the restroom maybe at least, maybe, maybe like one time a week? He said, well, somewhere around there, about once a week. And friends, I'll tell you this, majority of people are constipated. Uh, we've had many people, even at a young age, we've had young, young people being able to, um, there's one time there's a man, there's a young boy that wasn't able to use the restroom for two weeks straight. Two weeks, not passing anything at all. You, you know how stressful it is? You know how it feels to not pass anything? But you know what? That is like more extreme. You have people that goes even, go even higher than that. But then bring it closer to home for us. We need to use a restroom for every meal that we have, meaning that we need to have at least two to three bowel movements a day based upon the amount of meals that we eat. But the average American uses a restroom once every three days. Once every three days. Do you, uh, do you follow these bowel movements? The average American uses the restroom how many times? Once every three days. Meaning that in three days, if, we have, if the average American eats three meals a day, then they need to have nine bowel movements in three days. They're only having one. How many are they missing out on? Let's see the mathematicians again. In three days, the average American uses the restroom once. If they eat three meals a day and they have nine meals in three days, how many bowel movements are they missing out on? Look at that, eight, right? They're missing out on eight bowel movements. Imagine that adds up in a week, in a month, the average American is actually missing out on over 700 bowel movements every single year. Every single year. So again, it's very important to do that. And um, even using the restroom once a day, friends, is chronic constipation. If you thought you were in a good position, once a day is chronic constipation. So we're gonna share with you how we can, not, not only the problem, but I believe that God has a solution, right? So praise the Lord. Um, God has a solution to make the bowels move again. So praise the Lord for that, that God cares about our bowels. Wow. However, you know, it's like God cares about our entire being. Like he cares how many times we use the restroom. Like what? 
Like, God, you care so much. So again, we're going to share with you some simple remedies that you can use. Let's say you're doing your cleansing, you want to cleanse the bowel more, which I suggest every single person cleansing the bowel. I'll just share with you different things to get the bowel movement, cleansing the bowel as well. Simple one that you could do is, you know, is, is simple one. Upon waking up, you can do lemon water. Again, that is a milder, that is a milder version. We'll share a few more intense ones. But for some people that, hey, just this one will actually get it going. But again, it actually uh, is very beneficial as well. Alkalinizing and so on. But yeah, you do the juice of one lemon or if it's big, you can do half a lemon, up to you. Um, so the juice of one lemon, you put it in about two cups of water, two cups of water. You can make that water warm as well. Um, you know, that, you know, that really helps prepare you in the morning. And okay, one, half to one lemon, two cups of water. You drink nice warm lemon water in the morning. As a result, that alone sometimes will actually help stimulating a proper bowel movement. You do that on a regular, you can do it every day. Like you don't have to cleanse to do this. Like, so just do it regularly. Then that actually have a benefit as well. And again, another thing that is actually very good is what you call um, olive, olive. So if you have olives and, you know, this is actually recommended too, even in councils, um, you know, even in councils you go to, I believe it, it should be in councils and diets and food, very powerful book. It recommends olives as a means of helping constipation, right? So olive, whether it may be olive in the oil or the olive itself, you can actually take like five to 10 olives, five to 10 olives, take that together with your meal, five to 10 olives and be able to um, consume it with your meal to actually help with um, relieving constipation. Olives, like, you know, olives, that's how, you know, olive is great, it's powerful. And um, even, you know, olive in the fruit or the, uh, or the oil itself are actually very beneficial. And then, you know, going more, a little more aggressive now, um, I'm going to share with you something here. Okay, there's one of the teas, if you really want, just want like a laxative effect, and you really, you're like, man, I'm really backed up, I really need to go. Um, uh, you know, again, I would mention that there's so many different herbs that we utilize. Like, for example, just in our uh, colon cleanse alone, we have like our main ingredient is like psyllium husk. It's really a higher fiber one. But that was just to really balance off some of the laxatives that are in there. And it's not just like it's herbal laxatives, but it's a mix. It's a mix between high fibers, um, laxatives, those that absorb toxic waste and so on. But we have like psyllium husk, um, alfalfa, slippery elm, apple pectine, flaxseed, ginger, center, aloe vera. What I'm going to share for you right now is one of the uh, ingredients we have in there called senna. Um, you can make a simple senna tea. So what you do to make senna tea is that you take a half, and this thing will actually really get you to go. Like you know, it really makes you go, really makes you go. Um, again, if, if that doesn't work for you, I have another one that's even more aggressive that I'll share with you. But senna does the trick uh, a lot of times. If you get like um, if you get like half a teaspoon of senna, and you you make like a, you make, make a tea out of it. You drink like one cup of that. You drink like one cup of that. So half a tea into a teacup. Then you, you, you just put it in a teacup. You can even pour the boiling water over it. Um, that's if you, yeah, you can pour the boiling water over it and let it steep there, let it stay. And, you know, after like, let's say uh, 10 to 15 minutes, after 10 to 15 minutes, that should be ready. You drink that down and um, that should typically activate the bowels and get it to release and get it to go. Again, Santa, the only thing about Santa is this, right? Um, you know, because of the nature of it, it can actually uh, stir up a lot of gas in there. And, you know, some people could feel cramping and so on. That is why, you know, in this one, we actually balance it off with fibers and slippery herbs, herbs and stuff like that, because it actually eliminates that effect from the Santa. But uh, again, certain things to help eliminate that is you can do the Santa with ginger, that should help a lot with the cramping effects and so on, if, if that is the case for you. Not everyone will feel it, of course. But just mention that just in case you can add ginger to there, that will actually help a lot. Or you can add mycelium and that will actually benefit as well. So that is another way to get to cleanse the bowels through this herb center. Um, I mentioned this, I mentioned this other one. I just mentioned this other one. It's so many more. I wouldn't be able to go full detail here. But we have another recipe here uh, for that is called a smooth move. Anyone wants a smooth move today? I mean, a lot of times, you know, we sit on our, we call it our throne or whatever you call it, your toilet, your toilet, whatever it is. You know, you sit on your toilet bowl and, and you sit down. And as you sit down, you may think like, okay, well, I'm going to the restroom twice a day, I'm good. Because I'm going to the restroom, I'm in the bathroom twice a day. 
But friends, if you're in the bathroom for like five minutes and 10 minutes and 15 minutes, that's something wrong. You're constipated. You can be in there twice, three times a day. You could still be constipated. You know why? Because, you know, we aren't able to have that smooth move. You follow? You know, when we, when we, when we sit down on, our, on the toilet bowl, uh, we need to be able to get in and get out. Uh, I remember, you know, you know, someone was just talking about the experience that they need to have going in. You know, I remember an evangelist friend of mine. He says, man, this is how you have to use the restroom. He says, like, you know, it's like when you go to a church, you go in, you preach the message, and boom, and you leave, whatever it is. But then, um, you know, it's, it's similar effect. You know, we need to go in there, use the restroom. The restroom shouldn't be a place where we spend most of our time. Uh, if you're spending most of your time in the restroom, then something is going wrong. You need to have a smooth move ASAP. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to share that. Let me actually see if I can share that recipe with you because it's several different things in there. I'll actually copy this from um, our uh, manual right now so you can get that. Uh, so let's see something here. All right, let me paste that for you all so you can all get that recipe. I hope everyone, if you look in the chat, you'll see a recipe that is a smooth move recipe. Very simple. It's one cup of peanut prunes, you know. Uh, of course, we found the peats or the seeds on the inside. Uh, two tablespoons of flax seeds. Uh, you can, you know, ground on the flax seed first as well. Um, you know, that's just to make sure everything will be well um, blended in. And also, you, you use three cups of unsweetened 100% prune juice, right? Um, every juice that we speak about, of course, you want to make sure you look at your ingredients because uh, unfortunately, a lot of the juices is nothing more than just another junk beverage that is just there. Uh, so yeah, so three cups of unsweetened prune juice. And again, you just blend it all together. You take about one to two cups per day. And that really helps so That really helps activate the bowels, help activate the peristalsis movement. And you can get a good cleansing effect. Get a good cleansing effect. And I won't go into full details with everything else, but um, um, you know, those are some powerful things that you can be able to utilize to be able to get the bowels moving, get the bowels going and help with that. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've had people, uh, uh, we've had people at our center where, um, you know, they were cleansing. And I remember like the fifth day, one of the help guests came and she said, oh, it's day five now. And I feel like I'm really cleansed. And it's like all water. It's all water coming out. It's clear. And she's like, can I, can I like um, get back to eating now? I mean, she's just like playing around and seeing if she can um, get back to eating. And I remember um, I said, okay, you know what? Just continue on for the seven days. Let's, you know, for the full 10 days, let's see what's going to happen. <clears throat> and she said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to continue on. And I remember she continued on. And two days later, day number seven, wouldn't you imagine that I said, okay, let's see, because, you know, sometimes people do cleansing, they may see liquids, but then sometimes a few days may come again and boom, there's some more that you just never expected to be there. And exactly this happened. Two days later, um, she had a lot more stool coming out that she said that was looking like she had, you know, that was there for a long time. Could have been for months, maybe even years. This is what you call mucoid. I want to show you the picture of it because you might get really upset right now. But, um, you know, mucoid is like really rubbery looking and it's dark, tarry. Uh, it's like really old stool, really old stool. So again, a lot of times we have those things in us. We may have mucoids. Um, we may have like really old stool. I remember another individual we were cleansing, um, doing a cleanse with them with the colon. And she said, oh, whoa, this is my food from last week. Like she was actually able to pinpoint one of the things she ate the previous week. So I'm like, whoa, can you imagine how long those things are in us for? Uh, another video that we're working with um, when we did the cleansing, uh, when we did the cleansing, we, they actually were able to see a barcode, a barcode that they ate that actually came out of the body. Um, they're like, oh man, I ate a barcode. Like, wow, what is going on? So again, you just never know what is in you. So that's why we, uh, we, we recommend every single person being able to do a cleansing program, go on a cleansing regimen. If you, if, if you haven't cleansed in six months to a year, this is for you. You need to start cleansing, like plan to cleanse this month, plan to cleanse right now so that way you can get the benefits that you need. Um, no, definitely a barcode came out. Um, and you know, it, it was crazy. 
But um, it's like we just never know what is in us. Uh, we, we that times working with people, and we, you know, we had like flesh, almost look like chicken flesh, uh, in there, surrounded by blood, and all, you know, just all kind of stuff. We've seen, um, we've seen all types of stool, um, all type of stuff, and you know, again, really cleansing. You, you notice the big effects. A lot of people carry about like five to twenty five pounds in the colon. If one of your uh, your resolutions for the year is to lose weight then doing a cleanse is one of the powerful ways to start off that process of losing weight. We have people in, in, in uh, 7 to 14 days cleansing, being able to see 15 pounds being released. Like that is like, a, that's like typical, like 15 pounds is like typical, like uh, 20 pounds, you know, some people 25 and so on. So again, um, you know, doing, doing this actually helps a lot. It takes out unwanted weight. So if you think, okay, well, you know, um, you know, whatever it is, like if, if, if I lose X amount, whatever it is, but it's really unwanted weight. It's a lot of waste that we have. And, you know, a lot of things that shouldn't be in there in the first place. So again, uh, we do recommend every single person doing a cleanse. And then, you know, if, you know, colon definitely is one of the main organs, but I just go to, I know, okay, time is running out. So I just going to mention this. Um, I'm not even sure how much time we have, but um, I just want to mention the, about the liver quickly. And then we'll probably end up there, answer any questions, because I know like probably time is like running out right now. So again, someone says, can you clarify, if you have not cleansed over six months, how long should you cleanse? So this is what, if you're eating a plant-based whole foods diet, then I do recommend at least cleansing a minimum of once a year, minimum of once a year, right? If, if, if you're not on a plant-based whole food diet, I recommend cleansing at least twice a year, minimum of twice a year. And, um, but then definitely you want to make the transition because if you, you know, if you really want to maintain proper health, you definitely want to transition to a wholesome, wholesome diet, wholesome, wholesome plant-based diet. And, um, you know, so again, if, 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 if you, I, I almost said, if you haven't cleansed since last year, you need to cleanse now, but again, you could have cleansed in December or whatever it is. So then if you're on a plant-based diet and, you haven't cleansed in a year, then I do recommend doing a cleanse um, anytime from now. Um, you know, if maybe you're slacked off for whatever reasons um, and you haven't cleansed in like at least six months, I do recommend doing your next cleanse as well. You know, definitely we put so much time and money into vehicles and servicing our vehicles, maybe servicing equipment, servicing um, our heaters during the winter, whatever it is. Um, but then how often do we service our bodies, you know, do we really, yeah, I know how often do we spend money on ourselves and like we spend money on everything else, but on ourselves, like you need to treat yourself, right? Your body has been asking you for a treat and you need to do that to your body. Okay. Um, so again, someone is asking, can a smooth move be made ahead and start in the fridge? Most definitely you can make it ahead and you can start in the fridge. Um, definitely if you'd be using it, yes, yeah, store that. Um, again, typically I wouldn't, you would want to store it for too long, but it's fine. You can store it in the fridge. Um, that works out. That works out. Um, so yeah, someone says, is it recommended that you cleanse often due to the COVID-19? What do you see about that? Is it recommended you cleanse often due to COVID-19? What do you see about that? Okay. <clears throat> what I'll say is this. Cleansing, um, cleansing, like if you want to cleanse often, one of the best ways to have a cleanse that is often is um, cleansing one day a week. Um, like for example, myself, I do longer cleanses, right? And again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying this is what everyone should do. Um, but I'm just showing you an example of how I go about it. You know, if someone wants to cleanse more often. Um, so this is, those are principles. These principles that could be applied, you know, it's not set in stone. So, um, you know, I, I will do longer cleanses as well, longer cleanses, but also every single week one day a week, I do cleansing. Like I basically fast from my regular way of eating, maybe just juices or sometimes just uh, raw, you know? So again, once a week, I personally actually do um, cleansing as well. Just really being able to give my body a rest from everything else, help my body to rebuild, to cleanse the detox. So that's if someone wants to be able to cleanse regularly, that's like probably something that could be done. Or another thing is this, let's say you want to cleanse every quarter, then that's perfectly fine. Like, you know, whether it may be three to seven days, three to seven days. Um, like if you, if you don't have any major issues, three days is fine. 
if you're doing it like uh, very often, three days is perfectly fine um, if you're doing it like every quarter. So someone says, how long can we do the smooth move? Um, if you're doing a smooth move, uh, you know, it, it depends on like the purpose of that you're doing it for. Let's say if you clog up and you just need to get going, get, you know, use the restroom, get your bowels moving, <clears throat> then keep using it until your bowels are moving better. But again, if you want your bowels to move better, um, majority of your stool is water. The reason why many people are constipated and you get diarrhea, diarrhea, you know, um, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the major things is uh, dehydration, lack of water as well. You want to be able to increase your water so that way your stool could have a more easy uh, transition out. Um, majority, a large portion of your stool is actually supposed to be water. And also you want to make sure you have a good amount of fibers in your diet. Um, majority of people eat, um, you, know, uh, you know, lots of processed junk foods. Like we say we plant-based uh, or vegan, and we just eat a whole bunch of vegan junk foods. Like, you know, uh, we wonder like, why are we getting sick? Like so-and-so has been eating healthy. Like she has been vegan for X, Y, Z. Well, uh, what type of vegan is it? Is it like a, it's like a whole food plant-based or is it like a, a junk food vegan, right? Um, so again, uh, again, you definitely want to keep that in mind. And, um, you know, in, in, have a lot of fibers. Those are very helpful. By that, I mean, having all the raw foods at every meal, whether it may be breakfast, have, having lots of fruits, or at lunch, having lots of vegetables together with your meals. That has a huge impact. Fiber is not really a nutrient that we that our body utilizes. It's, you know, it's not like a nutrient, but it's very essential in that it works as a broom in our colon. It helps sweep away um, fecal waste, and it also absorbs toxins into it. Fiber does that. Fiber absorbs toxins into it, uh, which is great to be able to uh, cleanse the body. And another thing it does, it actually regulates blood sugar levels. Uh, you know, it slows down the spikes in blood sugar and it helps with diabetics. Major help, definitely want to add that in. Uh, someone else asked, um, do you need probiotic if you cleanse every time? Do you need probiotic if you cleanse every time? Uh, so it really depends on, you know, like most people will think, okay, if you cleanse, you may have to take a probiotic to replace the bacteria, right? A lot of people will think that. Um, so this is what we have noticed in, in our experience of working with the sick, working with different people. What we noticed is that majority of people do not have a good, healthy level of bacteria to begin with, right? So like, for example, we work with a lot of people and it's like the colon is, is, is so toxic. Like, you know, there's hardly anything. Like when you cleanse and you detoxify the colon, then you place in your body in a much better position to allow good bacteria to populate itself. So again, you don't need to have probiotics when you do those cleansing. It's, you know, it's, it's you, you know, you're taking in all those natural foods and everything else. And, you know, even when you do like, you know, yeah, so you don't need any, you don't need any probiotics to do it. And naturally when you eat all the foods, it naturally has like prebiotics in there, which actually helps more with the uh, formation of healthy bacteria. So again, it's not needed. Uh, we notice like we've worked even people with like, let's say even when it comes to like B12 and all those things, having, um, you know, who, who were very toxic and so on. After doing the cleansing, they came in, we did a full cleansing with them at our center. Um, and after they went back, they did lab work and checked it out. And they noticed that, hey, my B12 level actually is way higher after the cleansing than before when I had not cleansed. And we didn't use any probiotics for that person or whatever it was. We did like cleanse it, detox the body, get it back where it needs to be. I tell you, friends, if you can get the body in the, in, in the right conditions, God has provided healing mechanisms in nature, in our bodies. God has provided our body the ability to heal and restore itself. Hope you follow this one moment. So then uh, the, the reason why our body oftentimes doesn't fully heal and restore itself just by us not doing anything is because it doesn't have the right conditions to do that. Because we're constantly abusing it. We're constantly eating the things and living the lifestyle and, and our body's so toxic, maybe it's, it's not even cleansed out. And um, I mean, there's so many issues going on that it's like, yes, I really want to help you. I really want to restore you, but I just don't have the condition to do it. Like the blood is so toxic. Like I've been working hard, hard, hard. But as soon as I work and I do something good, it's like you're throwing down this next soda. Like you're working against me. Like if you stop working against me, I can heal. 
I can restore. Like God, God has placed that in me. But, you know, we definitely have to do that. Um, definitely have to be able to um, work along with nature, not against it. Work along with nature, not against it. So let's see the final thing, because, again, time is going by. And, again, like, um, I'll probably share, if you, I'll share if you where you can access um, more materials on how you can do a full cleansing, because, again, that's so essential. But I'm mentioning colon, and I'm going to mention the liver, because the liver is very key, very important. Liver and colon is one we never skip. Never skip when we work with people. But we do full body cleanses. You know, of course, blood, we cleanse with parasites. Like even this parasite here, um, you know, like I remember one of our guests who were doing parasite cleanses. And, um, and you know, when she was doing the parasite cleanses, she's doing the parasite cleanses. And finally, one of the days she said, hey, um, she was expressing to us. She's like, wait, wait, I saw something when I used the restroom. Like um, it was like a, a worm but it had like wings on it. And she says like, I was looking, but it was looking back at me. I was like, whoa, this is the parasite that you're talking about. And um, you know, many people are just amazed by what is in them. Um, many people are just amazed by what is in them. I remember also, um, even one of, my, one of my brothers, when we first started cleansing, when we, like, when we first like, started doing a lot more of these uh, herbal cleanses and so on, um, he did a, a full, um, he, he did a parasite cleanse as well. And we had like long parasite that was in there that he actually was able to take out from the uh, toilet bowl. And um, we were able to actually look at that. And, uh, you know, it, it's just amazing. It's just amazing what is in us. And the one thing we guarantee people as we go into this liver cleanse, like, uh, you know, majority of people that we've done liver cleansings with, I'll say like 95% of people, um, if, if they don't see any stones coming out, they probably didn't do something right. But um, 95% of people, you do those cleansing with them, um, almost guaranteed, you will see stones coming out. And um, majority of people, leavers, are, have been and are being compromised mm -hmm. through the years. Um, so again, even plant-based people, again, we, work, we cleanse, we work with all the different people, plant-based diet, the same thing. We see lots of liver stones coming out. And again, a lot of it is due to also even the water that we drink. A lot of time we drink... Um, even waters that may have lots of inorganic materials, you know, today you call it like spring waters and so on. Uh, there's so many inorganic materials, those things accumulate. And of course, you can, have, you can have kidney stones being formed and even liver stones being impacted. Dehydration could cause that as well. Um, you know, again, you have lots of different things like dairy products, all those could actually trigger that, cause those issues. Uh, you know, so there's several different factors, several different factors for that that could influence someone. Um, so someone is asking for juice cleanse, should the juice be made fresh each time per day or can a batch be made um, for the day, uh, be made ahead? Okay, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, so yeah, so if you, if you have the time, and uh, it's again, that's, that's the ideal situation. Um, you know, you want to make, uh, okay, okay, well, let me show you what you're saying. So fresh juice each time, um, you mean like, let's say if you're having, one cup at 8 a.m., you make fresh juice for 8 a.m. Then if you have another one at like 11 a.m., you make a fresh one again. If, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, is that what you're saying? I'll tell you this. Most juicers are able to handle um, about like a 24-hour period after you've juiced it. Of course, with it refrigerated where it wouldn't lose as much of its um, um, nutrients and, and you know, uh, phytochemicals and everything else. So again, uh, you can make juice for the entire day majority of your juices and that's perfectly fine if you if you have the time and you want to make it for every juice then hey go ahead of course you don't want it to be a very tedious experience so um you can definitely make it for the entire day that's that's good and there are also other juices where it works even better where you know it can go to a maximum of like 72 hours which is like three days you can like have it to last for like three days so make juice for the entire three-day period that's when you have better juices so again you can, yeah, you can make it for the day. Also, someone asked, um, would you recommend cleansing for women with painful periods, uh, such as endometriosis, fibroids? Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, so then, uh, yeah, that's, I, I do recommend that a lot. Um, hormonal issues, um, any women with painful periods, that could actually have a very positive experience for you. When you actually think about like, um, you know, a period as well. What, what is a period? It's like, it's, it's one of the cleansing parts a woman naturally goes through um, throughout the month. She used to like have a natural cleanse every single month. Like amazing, right? God, God made women to cleanse 
uh, so regularly. Uh, so then, um, you know, when you, if you if you can allow the body, one of the reasons why people have a lot of painful periods, of course, there are hormonal things, and of course, um, you know, whenever there's in, improper circulation as well, it makes it even worse. Improper circulation, you typically have a lot of blood um, coagulating and um, and basically like being centralized into like the main area of hair. But then what you want to do is if you can be able to have, uh, you know, if you can have better circulation of blood, have better blood, you'll notice that those period, painful periods will actually diminish where you wouldn't even have lots of that anymore. It's not normal to have a painful period. Of course, there are different things that you experience, um, but, you know, where it's, where it's really, uh, you know, a lot to bear. This is not a normal experience. So again, yeah, cleansing definitely, I recommend it. You could do that. Fibroids, all those things. Cleansing was extremely powerful. Uh, other things you can do is like, you know, build up, you know, build up, like, you know, do more exercises that actually have a big impact. Exercise is one of the most powerful hormone balancing um, techniques you can be able to use. And it works very well for uh, women. It, it just really helps with periods, prepare you for that. Also grab some molasses, do that every day. Pine iron, um, it helps with fibroids. Molasses, definitely we had a lot of people with fibroids who actually don't have fibroids, certain fibroids today. Um, molasses is one of the big things that we utilize for that as well. And um, definitely uh, like my, my sister and you know, even my wife has had in the past extremely uh, painful periods and so on. And one of the big things that made a huge change was um, uh, just being on a whole food plant based diet, whole food plant based diet. Uh, that has actually helped a lot. And if you're on that, definitely you have to use other means. So um, um, I'm not even sure if I'll be able to cover the uh, liver cleansing uh, today. Um, so, but I'll, I'll mention something. I'll mention it quickly. Um, and this is what I'll mention it quickly because I'm not sure. If someone could give me the time, uh, tell, me, tell me how much time we have. That'll be good so I can know how many questions I can answer or if I should just finish off with the liver cleansing. Someone can give me the time, um, uh, how much time we have left, so I can know how many questions I can answer and also how soon to wrap things you up. You can with. keep going. We're not rushing you. You can keep okay. going. Okay, okay, just making sure. Okay, good, good. So I'll just answer these questions and I'll, I'll show you a uh, liver cleansing regimen and then that'll be good. Okay, so then someone asked, uh, would you recommend, okay, someone say how, okay, how may I access the recording? I'm sure maybe one of our, um, the communication tech people will be able to answer that for you. Uh, someone else is asking, would you recommend cleansing for people suffering with irritable bowel syndrome? Uh, that's that's the reason why you need to cleanse. If you have IBS, then it's 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 a it's a reason for you to cleanse this month. And you know, I definitely re recommend that you know, grabbing. I'll say this: um, you can go through the entire cleansing that I'm mentioning, but also especially for you. I mean, I recommend it for really for everyone. Um, doing like a 30 day cleanse kit is really recommended. Um, this is, this is like, I have like a full guide with that. I think that'll definitely help you a lot. Uh, it's a really good for the entire body, but also focusing a lot of your powers. Um, I believe cleansing would be really huge. We've had a lot of people we work with for IBS issues and, um, you know, definitely it's not something you want to be able to like continue to have. I believe cleansing is the initial phase and then you need to be able to also rebuild and maintain proper um proper um bowel function but yeah there's there's there are many remedies that you can apply for that um so can the very um so i'm not sure caroline if you ask your question again that'll be good i'm not sure uh, what you mean by uh, can the very uh, on the same day you can ask ask that again also someone said with cleansing help someone with arthritis now again we're talking about cleansing but cleansing is not the only answer right but I will say it's a major area that has a big impact upon someone. And then they want to, again, ensure that they can make the changes in their lifestyle. And when they do that, they get a lot more results. In addition to that, there are other things that someone could do for like uh, those conditions. But for example, talking about arthritis. Yes, arthritis, cleansing, huge. I recommend it uh, like hands down. Uh, reason why is because again, arthritis is inflammation. A lot of the inflammation we see um, being able to decrease and release through cleansing. You cleanse the blood, like a lot of inflammation from, in, you know, in the blood, etc. You, you cleanse the blood, you cleanse, you know, the entire body. Inflammation we see goes away with cleansing. But again, you can throw out your trash today. You bring that trash back into the house. And in the next minute, that could be piling over again. So that's why I say, you know, yeah, it's one thing to throw it out and now it feels good, 
but it's another thing to not keep doing the same thing that caused that problem, right? So again, when it comes to arthritis, um, some of the major reasons why people have inflammation arthritis would be, um, again, lots of like dairy could do that. A lot of dairy, like cheese, milk, those are very huge. Um, dehydration, I keep mentioning that water is so essential. Um, let me, you know, if you have water, take some water in right now. Mm. Water is so good, right? Um, and this conditioning us so we can love water more because I've, I've had many people saying, hey, I just don't like drinking water, so I don't drink it. Like, no, you, you know, we just need to really recondition our mind into that um, of loving water. Um, if you don't like water, speak to the water every day and say, water, I love you. <laughs> you know, and I don't get, you know, it's not, it's not in that way. But okay, so then um, if you think about this for a moment now and you, you know, you arthritis water, dehydration is very essential. Another major one for arthritis is again, just really going on a plant-based diet. A lot of your animal foods will actually increase um, inflammation in the body. Um, animal foods is highly inflammatory. So highly inflammatory, like, you know, you eat uh, flesh foods is, is very much inflammatory. That would cause a lot more issues there. Uh, also what increases inflammation a whole lot more as well, like a lot is actually sugar. Sugar is a huge one for arthritis. If you know people who eliminate sugar definitely see tremendous results for that. And uh, so that's very key, that's very essential. And uh, of course, there are many remedies that we can have for blood pressure. Uh, sorry, I mean for um, arthritis, uh, that actually helps a lot. I won't go into full details right now. We actually have a full herbal, um, full herbal product that we use for people with arthritis issues. Um, you know, we have, you know, different remedies, uh, different natural remedies that one could be able to use for that as well. But yeah, definitely cleansing works. Also, let me see here. Is there a cleanse for squeaky joints? Squeaky, the, we can call it the squeaky joint cleanse. <laughs> that sounds good, right? Um, so yeah, so I mean, definitely just cleansing in general and doing those juices, you will notice that again, it's inflammation, you know, squeaky joints, a lot of it might be even dehydration too, but what happened is, right? Now, so it's just arthritis, it's just arthritis, same thing. So same thing like I mentioned, you want to eliminate those things that I mentioned just now for arthritis, because it's similar. And then again, when you have those joints, like between your joints, there's something that is called synovial fluid. And, you know, if we dehydrated and all those things, all those factors, then the, the joints will keep rubbing against each other. And, you know, it's, it's it almost sound like you have a, a hinge on your door that's, that's not even good, right? Yeah. Whatever it is. But then you want to make sure that you can be able to, like, you know, apply those things that I just mentioned for arthritis. And definitely, like other things you can add in for arthritis. Again, the plus is really big right now. People are going crazy about it. But it's curcumin. But curcumin is from the turmeric as well. Curcumin, uh, turmeric, and cinnamon. Those are very good combos um, of herbal stuff that you can do um, that you may find in your probably kitchen right now that you can already start doing for um, arthritic, arthritic issues. But again, add on the additional thing that we mentioned, make those changes. That's how you'll get lasting results. Um, so again, um, and also if you're plant-based and you're still having those issues too, when it comes to dietary factors, I will say this, um, nightshades could tend to also increase, um, or it would work well with you. If you have inflammation, it could increase and inflame the inflammation. So, so the night nightshades will do that. So you want to test those out. If you, if you still have a lot of inflammation, then try eliminating, um, those nightshades, like, uh, you know, tomatoes and, eggplants and and you know even potatoes but i noticed like potato juice actually works a little different for many like many people build to the potato juice which should actually help absorb and remove um arthritis but you know um sometimes when they cook with it regularly it could actually inflame so again you want to see you want to test this out a lot of people that like we've had another individual i remember um she was doing like she was doing like the uh we have a blood pressure drink right we have a blood pressure drink that, that works very powerfully. It has eggplant in there. And um, and I remember she was doing that drink all the time. And she said, hey, you know what? I'm, I have a lot of in inflammation. And I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I've done this, I've done that. And what is going on is I recently started feeling it. I um, can't remember the full detail, but I remember she was expressing things. I said, well, what changed recently? What have you been doing? What have you been using different? Um, what has you been using recently? She said she's been taking this drink, this um." blood pressure drink. I'm like, okay, so this is what, this drink actually has eggplant in it. 
okay, try eliminating that and let's see how everything goes. And I, you know, I believe like that actually helped but inflammation, she was actually able to see the difference in the inflammation as, as well as a result of eliminating this night shade. Um, so someone is asking, can the body naturally cleanse itself? Can the body naturally cleanse itself? The body cleanses itself every day, tries its best. It tries its best. Um, um, you know, the every limiting organ that we mentioned to you are uh, all cleansing the body. Your colon is cleansing the, your body naturally. Uh, by removing removing waste, um, you know your your kidney is cleansing the body, your lungs is cleansing the body. Like all those channels are cleansing the body. But what we're doing right now is because we've uh, you know we live in a world where there's so much even in foods that looks good, right? There's so much toxicity in many things, and you know uh, many of us are still you know it's it's, it's like the, the body's in a terrible condition. We, we've done so much to the body, so we can that we, give, we need to give it an extra boost. Step number four in health and healing we saw, now we need to be able to assist nature in its effort to expel impurities. Nature is doing it, but nature needs assistance. And step number four in healing, of course, like we mentioned earlier, nature is to be assisted in its efforts to do so. Uh, so as someone said, please give some eye guess on best vegetables for juicing. Again, <clears throat> there are many different um, vegetables that we can use. Um, so we have lots of different recipes, actually. Um, and we actually did, like, you know, just, to no, no, just as a note as well, like, uh, our, we have, like, a huge cleansing class in, um, in one of our trainings we did. I'll actually probably throw that link for people who want to be able to um, have that. We did, like, several hours just on cleansing, actually went through every single channel of elimination in the body and walked you through how to do it from start to finish. Um, you know, I'll definitely share that with you probably later on. We'll see. Um, but also someone says, um, can one have a variety of juice on the same day? Definitely doesn't hurt if you have a variety of juice. You can mix it up. Sometimes you can do, let's say if you do fruit juices, you can do like two fruit juices in the day. You can do two vegetable juices in the day as well. So you have like four. That works. What about the liver? That's what we're going to go to right now. Very good question. Uh, let's do the liver as we end off. Um, so again, um, thanks for that transition, Harry Collinger. Appreciate it. So, uh, liver gallbladder cleanse. This is what we're going to do right now. I'm actually going to like, I have instructions here. So just to make it simple, because, um, a lot of people might, you know, uh, I just want to make sure you get it right. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to copy all the instructions and you make sure you copy it from zoom or take snapshots, whatever it is, um, write it down, whatever you want to do. Um, but I'm going to take our entire cleanse, uh, liver cleanse instructions. You will have everything. I'm actually taking this from our manual right now, from our um, natural remedies manual, um, which, which is basically, which has like, I think, yeah, definitely over hundred pages. Um, I think over 200 pages of remedies, remedies for several things, not just um, cleansing, um, but then also for like cancer, um, diabetes, different things. So let me see here, uh, having difficulty with this. Let me make sure I can copy this for you one second. So to make sure you have all, all of this and I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it, but you know what? Many times people ask, oh, what did you say? What did you say? So we're going to eliminate some of that right now. And, um, oh, okay. So I'm actually trying to, Okay, I might have to share my screen, but I'm trying to paste it here, but Zoom is not letting me. Um, okay, let me just try one more time. If not, I'll share my screen so you can actually have this. Okay, so Zoom is actually not letting me. So let me just, let me just share my screen. Let me just share my screen and that way everyone can actually have this. We don't want anyone to miss out on this right now. So I'm just gonna make sure um, that is there. This is actually, um, okay, this is our, this is actually the file. Uh, this, this is, if, if anyone has a manual, it wouldn't be like this. This is actually the editable file of it. So, uh, but then we do have the ebook version. We do have an ebook version of this entire manual that has all that information. So um, this is the liver cleanse instructions. Uh, take a screenshot or something, um, you know, definitely take a screenshot or whatever it is, because, um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of information there. 
So then this is what it is. Liver cleanse. This is how you do your liver flush out. I do recommend doing the liver flush out after you've done at least three days of cleansing. Or, you know, if you do seven days, even better. Because the main thing is you want the bowels to be like cleaned out and cleansed before doing the liver flush. Because the liver, when you flush it out, those stones are deposited. In, it goes in through the intestines and it goes through the bowels. You understand? So then you want to make sure that you actually um, um, have your bowels cleaned out before. That's why it's essential to do even do like liver and colon cleansing together, where you make sure the colon is clean, cl cleansed out before you do the flush out. Of course, we have other things like um, we have other things like let's see our um, uh, you know we have other things like our uh, liver flush, liver flush that actually um, you know like herbal herb, our liver flush herbal tea and so on that actually has break down the stones even more. But this is the flush out itself. This is the flush out itself. So liver flush instructions, it says follow these instructions on the day before the, the last day of your fast. So let's say if you do seven days, you will do this from day number six. If you do like a seven day cleanse, day number six, this is what you'll actually be doing, day number six. So this is what you'll be doing. Uh, let me see this here. Uh, so basically, you would, this is the recipe here. You'll do three tablespoons. This is the this is, this is first thing that you do. Mix three tablespoons. In 24 ounces of water, three tablespoons. Excuse me, brother St. Deuce. I think your battery died. We can no longer see you. Okay, okay, no problem. Can you see my screen? Let me let me put on my secondary camera in the meantime. Um, one second. Let me actually put on my secondary camera. Okay. Okay, put on my secondary camera here, but then also. Um, okay, so if we can see the screen here, this is what it says. Print is too small. Hopefully, I'll mention it as well. So what we want to do here, Epsom salt, um, three tablespoons of Epsom salt, three tablespoons of Epsom salt, and 24 ounces of water. 24 ounces of water, um, distilled water. Also, um, when you do this, this helps to dilate the bile duct. The Epsom salt helps to dilate the bile duct. Also, the Epsom salt actually works as a laxative effect. It helps to actually cleanse the uh, bowels, cleanse the bowels as well. Um, so again, you will do this, then um, you make this solution, then the next recipe that you'll make is two different recipes you're making. Then I'll show you if you went to take each and every one of them. So two different recipes. Um, so you make this extra salt solution, then the next one is our liver flush juice. What you wanna do is this, you want to be able to do six ounces of grapefruit juice, six ounces of grapefruit juice, or if for whatever reason you cannot do grape juice, because I'm sure people will ask, well, what about people with blood pressure and who has uh, different medications where you cannot have grapefruit juice, then you want to be able to do um, three ounces of lemon juice plus three ounces of um, orange juice, three ounces of lemon juice or three ounces of olive of orange juice. So either or, you'll do six ounces of grapefruit juice or you do three ounces of lemon juice and three ounces of orange juice. Then you mix that with four ounces of olive oil. So you'll take like your olive oil, and you do uh, four ounces of olive oil, four ounces of olive oil. And um, also you would go ahead, you just mix this into a jar. Now this is what you do. Now that you have your essence salt solution, now that you have your liver flesh juice, those are the instructions now. So the day before the last of your cleanse, day before the last of your cleanse, let's say you're doing a, um, um, you know, let's say you're doing a seven day cleanse, then that would be on day number six. Or maybe you're doing a 10 day cleanse. That would be on, day number nine. Maybe you're doing a 14 day cleanse. That would be on day number 13. Or I mean, if you're doing a 14 day cleanse and you want to do it earlier, you can still do it on day number nine. Uh, you can still do it on day number nine and be able to, um, you know, and, and you'd be able to continue on with your cleanse after that. But then this is what you do. Um, you go ahead at 2 p.m. on the day before the last of your cleanse at 2 p.m. Um, this is where you want to stop consuming any types of um, you wouldn't consume any types of, let's say, um, uh, like juices or anything else after that, right? No juices or anything. So at 2 p.m., uh, you wouldn't eat or drink anything. What you will do, you know, from 5 o'clock is when you really start off things. From 5 p.m., you will basically drink six ounces of that Epsom salt solution. Same Epsom salt solution you made, you drink about six ounces of it, uh, about six ounces of it. And um, also at... 7 p.m., you want to be able to drink about another six ounces of that Epsom salt. If at 5 p.m., let's say you go into the restroom a lot, Epsom salt can activate the bowels. 
then you can skip that 7 p.m. one, um, but then uh, you can still do it. If not, uh, you know, you can still do the 7 p.m. one and hopefully that works out well. And also once you do that, then the next one on the schedule would be 9 p.m., 9 p.m. At 9 p.m., you definitely want to be able to drink that liver flush juice, the liver flush juice, um, you know, that, that, that recipe with the grapefruit uh, juice, six ounces of it and four ounces of the olive oil. Um, that's a good one. And also, um, once you do this, this is a little note that we have here. Note, it says, note, uh, drink the liver stone juice while standing next to your bed. Basically, um, you know, it's, it's best to drink it down in, in, five, in about like five minutes. You don't want to drink it too fast as well because it could upset the stomach if you do it too fast. But turn off, you know, any lights, just added information just to make sure you're getting ready for bed and lay on your back with, with, with one or two pillows propping you up. Uh, allowing your head to be higher than your body. But the key thing is this, is, is to lie on your right side with your knees pulled, like in a fatal position, you know, with your knees, knees pulled towards your body. Lie on your right side with your knees pulled toward your body. I think it died, so that's okay. I, I'm using this one still. Is that charging? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so lie on your right side with your knees, knees pulled towards your body. And then, you know, that's basically it. Um, and the next morning, once you wake up, Typically, once you wake up, then stones will like be released from the body and you'll be able to like see, um, you know, lots of stones coming out already. If not, um, of course, in the morning, the instructions at 6 a.m. in the morning, once you wake up at 6 a.m., what you want to do is be able to, um, uh, you know, at 6 a.m., you want to be able to do like another six ounces of Epsom salt, another six ounces of the Epsom salt drink, and that should naturally get the bowels moving even more, make sure those stones are out. Because again, from the gallbladder, it releases, it goes into the intestines, comes out through the bowels, so Epsom salt detoxes the bowels, gets it out of the body. We've had people that see hundreds of stones. We've had people that have seen like literally almost a thousand stones. We had people that see stones like 50 stones, um, 30 stones, uh, but everyone sees some type of stones and um, it comes right out and you never believe it's inside of you, friends. You never believe what is inside of you. And if, if, you know, if the final drink you will do is at eight, which is like another Epsom salt one at eight, at 8 a.m. in the morning. And then after that, you can transition then from there at least two days raw after your cleansing. Minimum at least two days raw, we do recommend after cleansing before you go back into your whole food plant-based diet. Because again, you want a good transition. You want to make sure like you have a good transition um, with your cleansing regimen and cleansing program. So, yeah, so that's basically it right now. Um, I wouldn't go into much more details. What I'm going to do, um, if we have questions about it, if we have any other questions, I'm going to answer that right now before we end off. Um, let me just see what we have here. And again, yeah, my main, my main camera, um, we actually, we've actually had like several presentations back to back today. Um, um, so yeah, so the camera actually just died, but hopefully we're ending off right now so that works out. Um, so yeah, let's see something here. Can the, um, uh, what brand of water do you recommend for those of us that live in the city? Those of us that live in the city. So it's not really brand per se it, it, that if I were to recommend, but uh, it's really more like the type of water. Um, I do recommend like individuals getting soft water, soft water. So soft water is what is recommended by councils. You read Council Nights and Food, she talks a lot about soft water, pure soft water, pure soft water. And pure soft water is water without inorganic minerals in there, inorganic um, components. Uh, what I mean by that is it doesn't have a lot of rock sediments, rock sediments that your body cannot utilize. It's soft. So um, what filtration processes that actually helps water to become soft um, would be distilled water. Distilled water is one of those. Another one would be reverse osmosis. Like, you know, those are like two key ones, uh, components that you can utilize. Um, you know, there are several um, filtration processes that uses reverse osmosis as well, distillation, like those are very good ones. Uh, also, someone sent the recipe, that's great. And um, uh, recipe preparation, someone else, wow, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, someone says, what is the recommend recommendation on, on frequency of cleansing your body or your organs? Yeah, so good question. I know we, we mentioned that as well. Um, however, uh, if you're on a plant-based diet, definitely a minimum of once a year recommended. If you're not on a plant-based diet or 100% plant-based diet, then you need at, at least two times a year would be good. Minimum of two times, at least two times a year. Um, so yeah, so we do 
recommend people adding cleanse into the regimen. And um, if you want, like, if you want more of these, like, right now I'm actually, um, right now I'm actually in the, um, in the, one of our main, um, you know, our mini factory for our herbal, for our herbal um, line in, in which we help individuals, one, cleansing, but also rebuilding the body through several different um, items as well. So what I'll do, I'll actually share with you how, if someone wants to do like the total body cleanse kit, uh, if anyone wants to be able to do that, be able to cleanse the body or be able to um, increase the effects of things. Again, you can implement all those things I mentioned if you want to increase the effects even more by utilizing the different herbal means we see wonderful, powerful results. I'll actually share that with you. Someone's saying like, where can, where can you get, where can we get the, the, your products? So I, I'll actually send the link. Um, uh, I'll actually uh, share the link with you so that way you can be able to get, <clears throat> get access to that. But if you go to this website there, definitely you can be able to get those items there. Uh, someone else is asking, um, okay, yeah. So yeah, so what I'll do right now for the next couple of minutes, I will just like answer um, different questions, but yeah, definitely easyseries.com, E-A-S-E-Y, E-A-S-E-Y series, S-E-R-I-E-S dot C-O-M. That's one of the ways that, you know, you can definitely be able to take advantage of the cleansing products. If you go to like the, the, the shop area, the store area, then you'll definitely see like full cleanse kit. We have a seven to 10 day cleanse kit, um, which is the uh, liver cleanse, the parasite cleanse, and also the colon cleanse. And it comes with a full guide on how to be able to do that. That's like three cleanses, seven to 10 days. And you can definitely be able to get that on there as well. Or what I really recommend everyone doing also, if you haven't done it in a while, we have like a 30 day cleanse kit. It comes with like the guide. Plus you get five different cleansing items. And, and it just really walks you through like, you know, your entire schedules, everything that you need to be doing, um, how to add on all those different cleanses in, in 30 day period. And um, I mean, you will love it when you do it. It's like, you need to treat your body, reward your body, and definitely you will see the results from that. Let me see what other questions we have. Uh, someone said, we did the 10 days. That's great. Um, someone says, okay, the link isn't working. Um, let me see if I type this properly. You only have two W's, that's the difference. Oh, oh, it has two W's. Okay, okay, sorry about this. It has two W's. Um, so let me type it again. <laughs> okay, is that working now? Uh, is that working? Let me know if it's working now. So it's www, not www. Okay, so www.easyseries.com. And um, someone said they did the 10 days, that's good. Does the, does the NEC ABC sell the kits? Now they do sell the kits. Um, I'm just not sure if they have in stock right now. So um, you can check. Uh, you can yeah, you can check with them. They do actually have our cleanse kit items there too. You can check with them and see if if, if they're in stock with that. Yeah. Also, someone says, can you use hydrotherapy to assist with cleansing? Most definitely, you can use hydrotherapy. Um, hydrotherapy is very powerful. We wouldn't be able to go for that right now. But you know, we actually covered a lot more on hydrotherapies you can use for cleansing in one of our recent advanced remedy trainings that we actually did. Uh, so someone says still not working. This is what I'm going to do. Um, um, I'm going to give you another link where you can get this. I'm not sure what is actually going on, why it's not working. Um, uh, okay, I'm not sure why it's not working for individuals. I'm not sure, but let me, okay, let's just try it one more time. I'll put this link. Um, this one should work. <laughs> okay, hopefully this one should work. So let me know if this one works. Um, um, okay, someone else, someone else beat me to it as well. Great, okay, you actually, you actually did it. Okay, okay, great. And also what I'm gonna share with you, one more thing, cause anybody asking about hydrotherapy, if you want to learn more about hydrotherapy, what we did, how many of you were, in the training that we did last year, advanced natural remedies training. Is there anyone in there in this room that, that took the um, advanced natural remedy training? Uh, someone said they did. I was, yes. Um, how was that experience for you? Was it, was, was it a blessing? Were you able to learn a lot? Um, what we're doing right now, uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. That, that's the blessing. And again, it was, it was really refreshing being with all of you. Um, it felt like family for the time that we were together there. Um, so again, what I'm going to actually share right now, we've been, you know, throughout the entire holidays and this season as well, the new year, we actually had a very uh, tremendous special with that. 
to individuals who didn't do the training, or if you want to recommend to someone, um, I'm actually going to share a link. Um, again, you individuals can get the training there, and, and even right now, they get full access to it. It's like evergreen. You can rewatch, you can replay, you can pause, you can write, you can, you know, it's like you, you do it at your own pace. Um, you know, it's like, again, it was very intense every single day that we were doing it. But it, it goes through many different aspects. Again, cleansing it, we'll talk more about certain water therapies, you know, that we mentioned for cleanses and other different issues, um, herbal stuff, um, cancer, different issues, different diseases, um, you know, COVID, you know, uh, COVID as well, and many others. So you can definitely click the link that I just sent there, and you can actually access our um, entire cleansing. And that will come in the kit. You see the same, the same manual. It's coming with a full kit. The kit has presentations on um you know on cleansing and everything else that we cover different illnesses different diseases and also it has a full manual in there that entire manual you get it when you get the kit um which has like all the different remedies um that we spoke about for cleansing and way more like you know hundreds of remedies in there so yeah definitely so someone says okay what's the link for the coaching training so yeah so then um okay so then that link is specifically for the um for the advanced natural remedies training. So someone says, can you do the 30 day detox um, while going to work? Uh, very good question. Can you do the 30 day detox whilst going to work? Yes, you can do a 30 day detox also while working. And um, again, it depends on what type of work you're in. It may, there may be certain variations, but what I will do, if I'm, if I'm doing the 30 day detox while working, I will sort of start the cleanse in a way where I will calculate when will I do the liver flush out. And especially on the day with the liver flush out, like let's say I'm, okay, let's say nine days, the liver flush out will be done. Let's just say, uh, but in like the 30 day cleanse, it's done in the second stage, which is the second 10 days. So like day number 19. So what I'll do, I'll calculate, okay, when will day number 19 be? And I'll make sure like it's a weekend. So day number 19, I'll make sure it's a weekend because once you start releasing those stones, it could be a lot, you know, you could be a little tired and, you know, it's a, it's a lot of heavy detoxing in that day. Uh, so you definitely want to be able to, so I'll calculate it so that day could be on the weekend. Maybe you might have to, you know, you know something that will work out, but definitely everything else is, you can do it at work. Um, everyone is different, but majority of people that are actually doing our cleansing program, they're actually going to work as well whilst cleansing. So uh, it works perfectly fine. So, so yeah, here's what you say, interested in the training, just go ahead, you can click the link. You can actually get it right now as well afterwards whenever um that's perfectly fine um it's actually super discounted right now the prices for it will actually it will actually change very soon um it's as you know it's like the kit and the entire training you know for almost um for half half the entire cost um so yeah so that's that's um, amazing um so let me see what other questions we have um okay great so if that's all the questions then i'll stop here um if that's all the questions, and I'll stop here for this evening. Do we have any other questions before we end off? So yeah. So as we as we wind down as, as well, this is what I'll say. Um, you know, I just encourage each and every one to be able to continue to make the changes in there. Um, continue to make the changes. Like, do not wait until next month for the following month, and do not say, okay, I'll put it down to do. Like this is the last scenario I'll give as we close, right? A scenario I'll give. And um, so there were three birds on a fence, right? And if, if you heard it before and you know the answer, don't answer. But if you don't know the answer, if you never heard it before, but you know the answer, still share. If you think you know the answer, still share it, right? But if you heard it before and you know the answer, don't answer. Okay. So this, I'll uh, close with this point. It's just illustrating a point for us as we end off. Now, so there are three birds on a fence. How many? Three birds, three birds on a fence. So the three birds on a fence, two decided to fly off. So the question for us today, before we, uh, you know, the question for us and, you know, is how many birds are there now on the fence? How many birds remain on the fence? So people are saying three, three, three. Some people are saying two. Some people are saying one, 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 one. Let's see some more answers. How many birds are on the fence? Someone says two. Now write in some whys. Like tell me why. Explain. Explain your um. 
Ex explain your reasoning. Let's see some reasonings behind it. Like why one, why two, why three, why one? You know, we have like, I mean, it's a mixed multitude here. Where, where is the past of the Zoom? We, we have a mixed multitude, right? So it says, because two flew away, two started, ah, very interesting. Look at that, look at that. Very true, look at it. It's, I said there were three birds on the fence. Two decided to fly off, but they never did. They just decided, it was just in the mind. They, they, they sort of said, okay, yes, I will do this. It's a good thing to do. I will do this. But you know what? They never really did. So there still remain three birds on the fence. If you said three, that's the answer. Someone said five. Wow, maybe, maybe they attracted more people, more birds. I don't know. Maybe they brought in more birds. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so there's still three birds because they only decided, but they never acted upon their decision. So today, my uh, encouragement to you, my encouragement to you is to be able to not only think, oh, yes, it's a good thing to do. You wrote things down and maybe you think, oh, yes, I need to, like sometime I will see how I can fit it in. But actually start working towards it right now. Be very serious about it. Like, you know, go ahead, like, get your items together to do your cleansing. You know, go to the store, get an item. If you want to be able to add in, uh, you know, the herbal aspects as well, like click the link, get the, um, get the entire cleanse kit right now. Whether it's a seven to 10 days or a 30 day cleanse, start doing it right now. Like act upon things so you can make a difference for your life right now. A uh, majority of people, you know, you know, will decide in their mind, but never act upon that decision. And again, it, you know, it's, it's, it's really doesn't make sense. You wouldn't get any results just by thinking about it. You know, thinking is the first, first step, but you need to allow your thoughts to be translated into actions. So as you translate those thoughts into actions, only then you can actually receive the results that you need. So again, I'm really excited to be able to share um, with every one of you uh, this evening. What I'm going to do right now is going to pray for each and every one of you that as we go through this new year, that we can make those changes we can make some changes in our lives right now to be able to um, uh, help in overcoming whatever it is that we're experiencing, maybe uh, cleansing, getting ourselves on the right, the right, foot, um, the right uh, footsteps as we head into this new year, as we continue on in this new year, that we can allow our bodies to be in the condition that it needs to be, that it can restore and heal itself. Let's pray together as we end up. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, and we thank you so much, Lord, for this afternoon. It's... Um, it's been a long time together, Lord, but we just thank you for the ability to come together to share and to be able to, um, I, I mean, just be able to learn the things in which we can utilize to help in the restoration of our bodies. Pray you with each and every individual that truly, um, that uh, they may all be able to apply those things, not only hear about those things, but truly receive the benefits and the results from it. And I pray that we can be a, ha a happier, healthier people as we um, put ourselves in obedience to your principles and your laws of nature and your laws of health. That's something that you designed de design to bring joy to our lives and to our families. Um, you know, to bring joy, recognizing that, okay, well, it, there wouldn't be so much despair and depression and all those things. But we pray that truly you may be able to help us. Help us, Lord, that we can apply those things. I pray, oh Lord, that you keep us protected and safe from many of the maladies and sicknesses that are out there today. There's so many things going on. All around us, so many people are perishing and dying all around us. But we just pray, Lord, that you may keep us and and cleanse us and rebuild us and restore us, and that as a result, that we can be used as a mighty vessels for you, mighty instruments uh, for you before it is too late to so keep us. And pray that we can have a wonderful remainder of this uh, entire um, evening, a blessed, wonderful week. Uh, continue to guide and protect us in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. We would like to thank um, Brother St. Juice for such a good presentation. He taught us how to cleanse, how to rebuild, and how to maintain. All right. You know, David in Psalm 51 verse 2 says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Brother St. Juice taught us how to cleanse the physical. God can help us to clean the spiritual. So if there is anyone in our midst who have not made a decision to follow Christ and you want to say this evening that tonight, dear Lord, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. You can raise your hand so that you'll be taken into a breakout room 
so that our Bible instructors can pray with you. And if you need, or if you need Bible studies or baptism, you can also raise your hand. God bless, and we are happy to have you uh, today. And we hope that this program, that you will not be like the birds to only think about it, but to go forward and take the necessary, the necessary steps and to cleanse your body. Not only to cleanse your body physically, but also to keep up with the spiritual cleanse as well. So we appreciate you and we thank you for being with us today. Sister Donnelly, would you like to add any final words? Okay, thank you everyone and have a blessed evening. If you want good health, nature's law obey, all her precepts heed, never from them stray, harmful habits shun, do not push yourself, when too tired or you may find will put you on the shelf. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Take some time to play, stand straight, breathe in deep. Work while it is day, always get your sleep. Eat just what you need, never more or less. Moderation is the guide to health and happiness. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Water is your friend, use within, without. Cleanses smooth and heals, put the germs to rout. Rest repairs the rents. Stress of living brings, loosens taut and ragged nerves and gives the spirit ring. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Sunshine and fresh air, clean and wholesome food, proper exercise, thoughts of right and good. Keep the cheeks aglow, body's fit and strong. Keep the brain alert and clean and give the heart a song. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Those of you who are still here remember our evangelistic meetings starting on the 14th of January, starting Friday. Please remember at seven, uh, please remember to come out, you know, healing for a hurting nation. Please do not forget our health series starting January 14th to February 5th with Dr. Monet St. Just, healing for a hurting nation, each night at seven. We are off on Mondays and Thursdays. 
if I'm seen correctly. <laughs> so please do not forget our evangelistic series starting on Friday, January 14. Thank you and have a blessed and safe week. Thank Sister Bailey. How do we get the replay for today's YouTube? Somebody's asking. YouTube. The pro Hello. Hi, everyone. Now I'm um, unmuted. I think everyone was muted. So I was trying to make that announcement about the crusade, but I was unable to, the outreach. But I trust that we will spread the word. We'll invite all family and friends. We want it not to be a private crusade, private outreach. We want everyone, especially those who have not yet committed their lives to the Lord, to be with us every single night. So let's do our part. Excellent, excellent program. Thank you so much, everyone. Hello, folks. <laughs> Just, oh, it's right up there. Uh, this Wednesday morning at seven, six to seven thirty, we have in prayer for um, COVID and for the um, outreach. And Friday morning at six o'clock too. We have to pray a lot, so please keep that in mind. Seven thirty, and we're gonna have it on the. Um, we'll send out the conference call number the old friday night number or telephone conference. telephone conference call for the prayer god bless you thank you pastor the announcement was made for the series great thanks so much dr ephraim donna lee was also muted she wanted to say something donna lee don't know if you're unmuted yet. She typed her comments. I see it. <laughs> Excellent program. Thanks so much, Renoir. Now? And it's still being recorded. So we could probably cut the recording off now. Hopefully it's on YouTube because that would be a great place to see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs>